Hi everyone, it's Chris here from the world of astronomy retail and in this video I'll be sharing my experience using the Vesper Smart Telescope. Um, I've used it a number of times now and I've captured a range of objects including the Sun, the Moon, I've got some galaxies, actually I've got a lot of galaxies because I was in the Virgo supercluster for a while, I grabbed a globular cluster and it, despite it being galaxy season, I've even got a nebula somehow low down in the Merck. So I've got all this to show you. I tested all the filters provided by Vionis. So we'll be looking at example shots taken with the solar filter, the light pollution filter, the dual narrowband filter. And we'll, we'll take a closer look at the Singularity app and how, how you set that up and its features, the capture process, image quality, and how to transfer your images over into your computer if you want to take the, the images further. When you first launch the app, you'll need to create an account and this enables you to find photos and allows you to personalize things. Then you'll be prompted to set up an observatory by entering your location and this allows the app to provide information about the weather and recommend objects to observe each night. However, there is one caveat that there's only 10 characters that you can use. So you can't call it observatory, for example, because that's got 11 letters. The final step customizes the app to your interests, then you're, you're ready to go wait for the, the clouds to clear. To capture the sun, you'll need to level the tripod using the bubble level, then press the button on the side of the Vespera and connect to its Wi-Fi signal. Tap solar mode on the app and the telescope arm will move out so you can install the solar filter. The app will only allow you to continue if you install the correct solar filter, ensuring that you don't accidentally observe the sun with the wrong filter. The arm then closes, allowing you to line up the sun with the gap between the arm and the main body of the telescope. And after this, the Vesper automatically finds and focuses on the sun, which uh, does take quite a while, admittedly, but it does entertain you with different interesting facts on the screen as you're waiting. And then there's a whirly singularity effect, then the sun appears and you can see a full solar disk with granulation and sunspots. And if you pinch to zoom in, you'll make out the inner umbra and outer penumbra regions of the sunspots. If you zoom in too far, though, the image quality does suffer. However, it was certainly good enough to make me want to observe the sun again. So I did. And here's my second image showing a smiley arrangement of sunspots. The process of capturing galaxies is, a, is impressively straightforward. You just connect to, and level the Vesper as you did before, press initialize on the app and send the Vesper off to plate solve and focus. Select look for target and a list of objects appears, each with a visibility rating. So it's green for good, red for bad and amber in between. I chose the Whirlpool Galaxy rated green, indicating it was well positioned. Pressing observe prompts the Vesper to move to the galaxy and then start capturing it. It captures 10 second exposures, stacks them together and builds up an image on the screen. And there's no further real input needed other than just to wait and watch the image build up. And from the point of view of someone who doesn't consider themselves a hardcore astrophotographer, I thought the results were really quite good. I could see the main Whirlpool galaxy exhibiting a a vivid spiral structure with faint galaxies scattered throughout the background. The stars showed almost perfectly round out to the edge. However, however, I did notice the odd bright star showed a bit of chromatic aberration, colour fringing, and there was a modest amount of noise, but not too bad at all, really. Um, a satellite streaked across at the beginning of the stacking process, which is completely typical, but the stacking process did actually manage to sort of divver it out, which I was pleased about. And the Vesper utilises software to compensate for field rotation, meaning that the edges of the image are well preserved. It's also worth noting that there was no image gradient whatsoever. And I thought that was especially good because the moon was just 30 degrees away. And on this occasion, I did forget to use the light pollution filter. Next up, um, I managed to capture an image of the Cigar Galaxy in Ursa Major, and that was on a subsequent clear night. I noticed that the neighbouring Bode's Galaxy was on the edge of the frame, but I utilised the app's reframe feature to centre both objects. This time I remembered to use the light pollution filter, although I didn't really observe much of a difference under my Bortle 6 sky, so further tested 
testing needed on that one. The one thing I did notice was an increase in the noise though compared to the previous image. When you zoom in on this one you can clearly see noise forming a, a radial pattern. Nevertheless the Galaxy still popped out nicely and uh, I enjoyed it. I was eager to test the dual narrowband filter on Nebulae, although I did have my doubts with it being galaxy season as the Nebulae aren't really well positioned, they're, they're quite low down in the sky. And my, my low down sky resembles some kind of pea soup at the moment, so I basically didn't really, really have much expectations for Nebulae. But I was generally surprised to see the image of the fish head Nebula start to develop on the screen. This was the first time I'd ever captured the fish head Nebula, so I was it was it was a time to save it really because I don't get to image an object for the first time that often anymore. I was really happy with the capture so I decided to export the raw TIFF file to further process the image in, in GIMP. And being old fashioned I was kind of expecting there to be an SD card slot and I could transfer a card over but Vespa have um, gone the route of a Wi-Fi solution where you connect your computer to the Vespa's Wi-Fi signal open your file explorer and enter an FTP address into the navigation bar. This was a quick method of accessing images once you knew how to do it and I found the instructions to do this at support.vionis.com. Vionis have introduced a mosaic mode which increases the field of view from 1.6 degrees by 0.9 to 3.2 by 1.8 degrees four times the, the area of the sky and it achieved this by moving around the object in between each shot and with it being galaxy season I decided the perfect test would be the Virgo supercluster of galaxies so I chose M87 which I knew was in Virgo and used the mosaic mode to reframe an area of interest that covered as many bright galaxies in the group that I could see. The Vespa did its thing and headed over to the Virgo supercluster and started capturing. And I wasn't really sure it was doing much to begin with but it soon I soon realised galaxies were starting to pop out the wider the image got and the cleaner and clearer it got and after 48 minutes capture time we kind of had our own little Hubble deep field going on so not the prettiest of images admittedly but maybe the most profound um, if I kept the Vespa longer I'd want to explore the mosaic mode more because not only does it cover more sky it effectively zooms you out makes your stars look tighter more fine and the noise looks finer as well so it kind of improves the image quality in that way To view and share captures, you have, to, you have the option to save stacked images as JPEGs. However, if you wish to have more control and perform additional processing on a, on a, on a single file captured, you can save as a 16-bit TIFF. Or if you want complete control, you can save a, a complete set of FITS files for stacking in your own stacking software and then for processing. So three levels of, of um, difficulty, really, or, or in-depthness. My final image with the Vespa was of the Great Hercules Cluster M13. And this was one of the app's recommended targets for the night and it recommended taking 15 minutes of exposure. So I checked in on the image after 15 minutes and I was left with a rich image with little in the way of noise. I could see really good star colour and even there was a, yet again another little galaxy hiding in the background. I couldn't resist using the slider bar again to repeatedly scrub through the image and see it build up good fun to use. So accessory wise as well as the light pollution solar and dual band filters there's also the option for a backpack if you want to transport it safely and adjustable 30 centimeter tripod which is slightly larger and has more adjustment if you're setting up on rough terrain and an hygrometer which works with the Vespa's dew control anti-mist system and I, I will speak a little bit more about that in the moment, in the conclusion. I found operating the Vespa Smart Telescope as, as easy as using Netflix on my TV really. The app was user friendly, a wide selection of objects and details, lots of details about each object as well. And I was, I was impressed with the quality of the live stacked images on screen. I think the owners have done a good job with the bait in processing but the option of some kind of manipulation tools such as level and curves, color balance, saturation on screen would have been a nice touch and something nice to sort of play with. 
sort of like some enrichment, added enrichment. But having said that, the image can be easily exported and processed. And that process I found to be quite easy once I know how to do it. Really, there's only a few minor complaints and uh, yeah, most of it's good. It's well designed, um, but I don't know what the deal is with the blue, the blue, the blue, the blue, the blue power indicator light. Um, that's not ideal for star parties where you're only allowed red lights. Um, I don't know what the deal is there. Additionally, plate solving and focus did take a while, but I'd rather it take a while than rush and then fail. Like it took quite a long time, but it always did it perfectly. And that's better than it rushing it and then crashing and having to start again. So I personally don't mind that. Um, one point of contention is, of course, the price, the elephant in the room here, because we all know that a lot of beginners can't stretch to £2,175, $2,500, and that there's also other smart telescopes coming on the market for significantly less money. However, you know, you can really trust me when I've had this in my hands, I've used it, you can see the price tag in the fit and finish and how well integrated everything is, how flawlessly it works, how good the app is. If you can afford it and you want absolutely no head scratching whatsoever, this is definitely an option to consider. The Vespa alone to me appears to have the optional hygrometer installed. This is an optional extra as mentioned earlier. This device measures the temperature and humidity allowing the Vespa's dew control system to kick in when required and at no point did I see any dew forming on the lens. The Vespa's battery held up well and I was never worried about running out of juice or or dew or plate solve errors, nothing. And living in the UK where it's so damp, it's, that's quite an achievement. Um, talking of living in the UK, um, it arrived with a two pin plug and we've got a three pin plug here in the UK. So if you're buying it and you live in the UK, plan for that because you will need an adapter. Looking back though, I'm not sure how well the light pollution filter worked. I did use it once, but then I wasn't really inspired to use it again. But then again, it might be more use under like Bortle 8, Bortle, light, Bortle 9 skies that would have to be tested. I can't really comment on it really. Um, probably didn't have enough use of it to comment fairly on the, the light pollution filter, but the, the solar and the dual narrowband filter are really great. Talking of the dual narrowband filter, I really can't fathom how I got such an image of the fish head nebula considering how bad the sky was. I was expecting to see nothing, it was terrible, but it, I got an image I was happy with. Overall, I think if you're looking for a high quality smart telescope, the Vespa is definitely worth considering. As my time with the Vespa comes to an end, I just want to thank Vionis for loaning me the Vespa to review. It's important to note that there was literally no strings attached. They simply offered to lend it to me for a while without any kind of obligation or expectations. And because of that, I, I was really happy to take them up on their offer. Um, I've, I've got a busy life, so I didn't, I don't like to take things on that where there's a lot of pressure and they, they didn't put any pressure on me. So I really appreciate that. I'm sure there are many aspects of the Vespa that I've not managed to cover and if I miss them, just please let me know in the comments. But I hope the, vid hope the video is giving you some idea of what the, the Vespa Smart Telescope is capable of. And I also want to thank everyone for watching my channel. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to my channel if you want to see more astronomy related content in future. Also, I'd like to give a special shout out to my amazing small group of hardcore channel members and my Patreon. I really appreciate it, it all helps. So until next time, really appreciate it guys and catch you on the next video. And tell his clouds to sod off as well. Don't forget that.